Hour, Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. Uh, we've certainly got a, a big day on our hands. The question is whether or not uh, volume will come in. I think there are certain sec uh, sectors that it will. Um, it is Friday, so you have lighter volume. Uh, we're doing about 6.5 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. Uh, so, yeah, there's not a, a real clear volume picture here, either uh, up or down over the last 20 days or so as we've gone down and uh, retested the 60 excuse me the 36 36 area and kind of doing that yet again today but is the volume blowout uh it certainly isn't for when i use the cboe volume and uh, if anybody wants a copy of that i'll be glad to send them the link uh, i've looked high and low uh, for volume and uh you know there's ways to skew it uh, this way, there's not a lot of ways to skew it. You may have to do a little bit of research to understand what you're looking at, but it is every share no matter where it's traded. Uh, so uh, we've got that. Uh, and, of course, could we have a lot of volume at the end of the day? Well, you almost always do. Um, while they're supposed to report dark pool trading within five minutes of the trade, it's more of a... Uh, I'm going to say it's more of a uh, uh, suggestion uh, than an actual rule, uh, more like a guideline. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. Yeah, kind of like that. As always, uh, we come to you at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what else do we have? That's kind of it. Well, we're off a hundred, almost 100 points. Let me update this just to make sure because I know how quick these are moving. Uh, we're off 97 points on the S&P cash. Dow's down, oh, let's call it 590. Uh, NASDAQ's off almost 400. Russell's off uh, 46. Um, but again, maybe we get the volume at the end of the day. I don't see anything that blows us through 18 billion shares, which is where... I've been uh, marking that 3636 level on the uh, S&P cash, and it's uh, is the NASDAQ uh, certainly weaker? Uh, well, certainly today it is, but I think, uh, uh, yeah, we got a little bit of all that. Now, the question is, did they just run this? Uh, why the uh, Chinese uh, were off on vacation for a week? Uh, or are we going to come back and find that this is a retest of the low that we had yet again? before uh, and we're just bouncing around in this trading range and having a, a kind of manic depressive cycle in the market um, the first question uh, do I have anything yeah I've got two long positions and both of them uh, both of them are up on the day not much but they're up on the day uh, if you're in the right sector you can do okay um, if you're not, you probably want to be day trading. And by day trading, I mean not taking anything home at night uh, and maybe uh, trading a little bit pre-market and getting out before the end of the day. Because it doesn't take much uh, to flip this market from uh, being uh, a huge squeeze fest uh, for the short sellers and, of course, uh, a, a huge uh, down day for those that are bullish. So uh, when I look at it, uh, you know, I, I, I was almost thinking about finding some long positions last night. I was looking at the uh, put call ratio um, in the newsletter today. I kind of pointed it out uh, and the trend. Uh, but the I tend to use the trend on the Amex since it's uh, only about 250 stocks and most of those are ETFs and most of those are unleveraged and most all of those are positive. The newer stocks tend to trade on other uh, exchanges. Uh, but uh, ARCA, Amex, uh, there are not that many stocks in it. Uh, but certainly they are all in that vein. And since the retail trader 
is one at app to go to it. I guess I probably ought to bring that up and show it. Do I have it here? Uh, I would assume I've got it right here. So let's go to that part here. I highlighted them. Uh, yeah. Um, 42 has been kind of high on the in the money put calls. Uh, but uh, normally what you want to be if you're bullish is something uh, approaching uh, 50 on the put call ratio in the VIX. Now, the VIX put call ratio is just the premiums on the out of the money puts and calls. The equities are all of them. Generally, you will see most retail traders trade in the money puts and calls. The pros tend to be uh, a lot of times on the VIX because uh, they're hedging positions. So they're willing to take some small losses, but their hedges will be on those big moves. Uh, and unfortunately or fortunately, when they don't or won't buy uh, the uh, put calls or won't buy puts to the downside, uh, as I said many times on this show, that's when you tend to see huge gaps down. Does it happen all the time? No. But it's enough to tell me that maybe there's a hurricane in the Gulf. It's not going to tell me that it's going to hit my house. Uh, but you want to be wary. You want to start looking out when you get those very low uh, put-call ratios in the VIX, uh, which uh, means that uh, people just aren't thinking the market can move a lot. Generally, when everybody doesn't think that the market can move a lot, uh, the market moves a lot. It just seems like, uh, as many people say, uh, when everybody expects one thing, it just does not happen. Something else does. So, um, as I said on that, uh, also looking at the volume so we can get a clear view on that. Uh, I always put uh, in every newsletter a uh, tabulated version of the CBOE volume. Um, Mostly because volume, depending on where you can get it, can be very different. And you've really got to know, if you're using price and volume, what you're looking at. Are you just looking at the shares traded on the NYSE? Are you looking at all the shares traded everywhere? Um, I'm a fan of uh, let's have everything. Uh, some people, it, I guess because it's easier and it comes in their feed, will look at just uh, shares traded across the New York Stock Exchange. It's a pretty good sample, but a lot of times uh, when they're close, that's not good enough. But anyway, just to show you how close we had uh, on the last couple of days. Yesterday, we had uh, basically $10.5 uh the day before uh 10.75 billion yesterday. Uh, on the pushes higher, we both had higher volume. We had 12.6 billion shares on the first on the second push up, and a 11.7 billion shares on the uh, one before that. 12.7 uh, going back to last Friday. So, if you know, generally, you'll get three, four, five billion uh, share move out of that kind of area and that gives you the signal we just haven't had a really clear signal on the broad indexes so far we'll be back after this of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at 1 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. And a uh, question about the Bloomberg thing that. Uh, I watched for a few minutes uh, at 3 a.m. in the morning when the dogs decided they had to go out. Actually, one dog, but you might as well take both, right? And then you may be able to lay in bed just a little bit longer in the morning. So anyway, no, they were they were pretty focused on uh, on the leadership of uh, the United States. They weren't mad at uh, somebody in Poughkeepsie. They were kind of mad at. Uh, uh, the overall policy. I think maybe part of it is that they're very mad um, at themselves. Um, I think they have five different plans to try to um, uh, figure out how to lower fuel costs this winter. And the question is uh, for them, how do they divide up who gets it if they're going to do it all as the EU? At the moment, they're all fighting over it and driving the prices up. But with uh, Germany owning about 80% of everything in all of Europe, I don't think I've said this enough. I've said it before. I don't think people really understand. Germany owns everything. They lost the war and they, and they bought everything back while everybody else was being lazy. And, I mean, that was it by, by 2000. Their banks own everything. Uh, they worked very hard. Um, they uh, have a high pro uh, a, a level of uh, education for the people they got. Uh, when they reconciled the East Germans, they've got a lot of low-dollar workforce. Um, they've thought a lot about it. Uh, now, of course, they've done some incredibly stupid things, and we'll point the finger at Merkel for making a deal with the devil to get energy from Russia, uh, while other people that uh, <coughs> will remain nameless the U.S., offered huge amounts of natural gas and other resources, but no, no, we can't do that. We're going to go to somebody that we know is evil to get our energy. So I think they're, I think they're mad for a few good reasons. I think they're also mad for a few reasons that uh, um, a lot of times people hate the uh, things that they see in themselves that they hate the most. And I think a lot of this is looking in the rearview mirror 
I think they, you know, if they're going to talk a lot about a blame, I pointed at Merkel. Uh, her and a bunch of other idiots. Um, I don't know how the uh, big industrialists over there let these guys get away with it because it was incredibly stupid. But uh, you lay down with uh, dogs, you're going to get fleas. So uh, now, of course, they're asking for uh, favors from the U.S. that we can't grant because we've cut our nose off to spart, uh, spart I can't even say it, uh, cut our nose off to spite our face on energy. So, you know, we're, you know, we could be two billion, we could be two million, two and a half million uh, extra barrels a day in six months. But uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, we've got a concerted uh, energy policy here that is suicidal. They had their suicidal plan. And the question is whether or not uh, after a winter of freezing, anybody wants to continue with the suicidal plan on energy. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And uh, let's do a little history. And then we will get in to the rest of of the very big show. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1952, American inventors Norman Woodland and Bernard Silver granted the U.S. patent for classifying apparatus and method. Uh, we know it as barcodes. Of course, today we better know these uh, as that. And of course, they've grown into other things. Uh, and other versions of these. Of course, they pretty much all de uh, depended on some technology that hadn't really made its way uh, through, uh, and it wouldn't until the uh, mid-80s or late 80s, and that was uh, laser barcode readers. Uh, they were highly problematic. Uh, they sold their patent for $15,000, so they didn't make that much off of it. And later... They were inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame, but like a lot of things, they were very early uh, in their idea. And, uh, yeah, this is 1952. I think it was 1960 or 61 when the first laser actually uh, was invented uh, and shown working. So, yeah, uh, you, can, you can look at that. Let's go ahead and start looking at uh, some charts here. I think I've got a few. Um, the one I was probably most interested in today, if I can get, uh, where is it at? There it is, is uh, taking a look at the SMHs. Uh, over uh, night, we had a, uh, got Pearl Harbored again uh, by uh, uh, AMD. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, Today, you would think we probably have a lot more volume than this, 3.85 uh, million shares. Uh, last low is five. I mean, I think we're going to have enough um, to get back down to the lows. But uh, right now, I probably thought that by 2 o'clock, we'd probably have plenty uh, and already be through that September low of 5.25 million shares. So it's probably going to be more. But... Uh, I mean, the real uh, outstanding value that uh, we want to be looking at is this 189.94. That's the uh, seven and a quarter million share low of July 5th. Now, do we get to there? Which is, I think, a much bigger deal. Uh, energy is about the same on the way up as on the way down. So at the moment, unless we break uh, the SMHs uh, with heavier volume than seven and a quarter million shares by the end of the day, we could have uh, just a lot of uh, back and forth. Um, one of the things I dislike is uh, going whole hog uh, uh, in a downtrend. I love this pattern much better. I'm not saying it's going to complete. Uh, we're probably going to get there today. But uh, as I've talked about it so many times, uh, the double repo pattern where you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 days underneath the 3x3 three three or 9 day. You get a couple of days above it. Uh, we're probably going to close down below it. You get maybe one day. The next move back, if you're trying to buy a low, that's generally the, the one. You get some retests. One of the reasons why, um, why I tried to play this first bounce and didn't get it right 
uh, on some semis. Uh, wasn't the end of the world or anything. I wouldn't be long these uh, in equities. I bought some calls. Um, thank God I was in several other positions that are continuing to do well, even in a down market today. Uh, but uh, if we get some kind of low out here and then break back above it, I will be start buying uh, stuff in the semiconductor industry. But uh, at the moment, uh, no sign yet. And uh, doesn't mean that this is going to do that. The thing is, though, if uh, we close below the 3 by 3 have a day or two below it, and then close back above it, Katie, bar the door. That is the big signal. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hector points out today that uh, ConocoPhillips is back up to the previous high. Looks like we're going to be able to uh, have more volume uh, than we did on the June 8th high. Any, uh, any breakout of uh, more than 7 billion shares, I'd say the odds are 95% that we're going to get more than 7 million shares on ConocoPhillips today. Uh, so does that mean we break out? I think the market probably has to... Uh, find some kind of low, but as soon as it does, uh, I think everybody will be piling on uh, these right now. Uh, let's take a look at uh, XOM. The problem is when you have a really good stock, uh, almost everybody owns a stinker, and even in energy, being a, a clear winner uh, for the foreseeable future, 
uh, we will find people doing stupid things. And generally, they sell the strongest stocks because they can, and they hang on to the stinkiest stocks uh, because they can't sell them without blowing out the price. I mean, if we sell something, we sell 1,000 shares or 5,000 shares or even 10,000 shares. Let's say that you're swinging a big line. Eh, market pretty much over as soon as you sell. Now, if you've got a million shares or 5 million shares and you're some kind of big hedge fund guru, uh, much more problematic. Now, on ExxonMobil, you do not have the volume today. So I'm not exactly sure what the difference is between these two. Uh, but uh, a lot of times it's sell what you can, not what you can't uh, on big down market days. So when we look at this, um, you've got uh, 104.55. Didn't quite touch it, but you did get into the candle. You had a uh, little less than 32 million shares. Today, you've got about 16.7. So let's say you get 22 million shares. That's going to be into that candle and a bit shy. Now, you know, price is a little bit better than volume, but generally it's telling you that maybe uh, this is going to take a pause. I don't think it's going to take a blowout pause. Uh, but uh, you may be able to get uh, a pullback on Exxon. Uh, COP looks uh, like the faster horse in this race. Okay, what else do we have? Doo -doo -doo. I'm looking at two potential trades in MEN and FXI. Okay, you're doing nothing but going sideways in this for a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not a big fan of getting into these until you get some kind of sign of strength. Um, I do like the fact that you're only about half the volume of yesterday on a down day in Newmont Mining. So I can't say that I'm bearish on it so much as I'm waiting for this thing to give us some kind of signal that it's done going sideways. Um uh, but uh, at least today's uh, signal, uh, I may count it as 15% of a decision, uh, is lighter so far today. Uh, let's take a look at FXI. Uh, this one is getting really pushed uh, by the big titans of Wall Street. And I've got to tell you, on this one, uh, excuse me, um, yeah, on this one, uh, I, uh, FXI, excuse me. Uh, this is uh, being pushed. Um, you've got some pretty nice low volume. We'll see what Monday brings. But this is a nice pattern. One of the reasons why I think that we could get off the lows on Monday. You had a low on March 15th that had 117 million shares, 2602. You've dipped below it. You bounced back in. But you dip below it on 35.6 million shares against that 117. That is a signal that a blind man could see. And as I like to say, it's a burning bush. How are you going to ignore that? The bush is burning and it's not consumed. A little biblical reference for you heathens out there. Anyway, uh, you had a nice bounce today and lighter volume out here. Uh, if this thing acts any well or way uh, decent on Monday, I'd keep an idea. Now, here is one of the things uh, that you want to take a look at. This is a potential three-gap play to the downside, which would suggest you have better than usual odds of getting back up to 33 bucks. So, now what is uh, China unleash the uh, the uh, dollars of war and start throwing cash around the country? Uh, does the uh, reopening and uh, the end of a lot of these uh, draconian COVID mandates uh, go away? Uh, hard to know exactly uh, what's going on in China. Uh, as we've talked before, you always see that Eunice gal from CNBC talking, and I, I always have a feeling that if she wore mirror sunglasses, I'd see uh, five guys on either side of the camera with uh, AKs kind of pointed at her in case she says the wrong word. I get that feeling, that hostage feeling about her actually saying anything that she actually believes, but 
you know, if you believe the chart out here, you certainly had a nice low on extremely light volume. You bounced. You had a sign of strength uh, on this. Uh, what was this? You had a sign of strength with decent volume of 62 million shares. You went up for another day. You gapped down. I have a feeling that was a lot of people wanting to get out before the golden man. I keep on thinking I'm going to make a mistake and say something else. Golden week. Uh, out here and uh, you didn't have much volume so I'm we'll see what Sunday night brings but if we start seeing money flow into China my guess is we might also see some kind of decent low over here in the United States so uh, yep thanks from Greg uh, from Lutz Minnesota uh, let's see what else do we have oh we were going to get to AMD AMD uh, breaking through this long-term gap that was support. Of course, there are, uh, uh, some of the pre-announcements are starting to flow. Uh, we had a nice uh, gap up on, what is that, uh, July 24th of 2020. We're back to those lows. Uh, and how much, was, how much volume was that? Let me find it here. Okay, 205 million shares on the upside uh, a little over two years ago. So what do we have here today? 111 million shares. So that is compared to 205. So yeah, you're getting into at least some part where there's not a absolute ton of volume. I think these uh, companies are probably gonna turn around. I'm just not exactly sure. Uh, the one good thing is that uh, both AMD, Intel, and uh, NVIDIA uh, in the uh, toilet, there are some good sectors to be looking at because of that. Uh, I've been talking about it in the uh, Tech Insider. Uh, I'm not ready to bite right now, but I think that the, there could be some big winners, uh, not in this sector, but because of this sector. Uh, so I'll probably be writing about that in the Monday edition of the Tech Insider. 877-927-6648. And, of course, uh, got some more stuff here. Let's take a look. Da -da 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 oh, I did have a question here. Did I delete it? Uh, oh, yeah, I did, and I kept it. Oh, we'll get to this when we return. Uh, a question uh, from RFB. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Answer a question. And anyway, uh, oh, we've got another one. Yeah, I got a couple of them here. Uh, U.S. Oil, uh, US, uh, o oil fans holding better than the XLE. Um, it depends if you want to be the tur uh, the tortoise and the hare. Um, I think. It's kind of like gold stocks. Uh, gold companies have a bunch of uh, gold on the ground. So when you buy them and it goes up 100 bucks an ounce, uh, you take whatever the reserves are and add that uh, to their value. Um, the USO is really kind of just the oil part of it. So you get the instant move here. But in the coming days, just like gold, you find that the gold miners end up getting that money back in spades uh, more than generally gold itself. So it depends on what you're talking about. Today is a good sign that uh, da, 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 that uh, your other ETF in energy will probably do very well. As I said, on a day like this, they tend to do the wrong thing for the wrong reason. And... The USO, much harder to do that because it's actually part of the oil uh, industry. You can kind of do that with, uh, with, uh, with energy stocks uh, that aren't just straight oil ETFs. Uh, but, uh, you know, you get a big move like this. Uh, you get a big move in the USO. It's normally followed uh, by other companies in this sector. Um, it doesn't do you any good to sell into an ETF uh, like a gold one if gold's going higher. Um, it's still going to be there. All you do is diminish the value of the how many shares are out there for gold. Same thing, I think, with this one. I'd have to look at it a little bit more. Uh, but Because uh, I know it's a LP, so I don't know exactly how that works in this one. Uh, so you'd want to look at the charter on USO. But my guess is that's the way that everybody looks at it. Whether it's true or not, it's never stopped anybody in the stock market. Uh, so uh, that's what I'm looking at. I think uh, much like gold moving, you get a lot of movement or a much bigger movement off the companies around it. Uh, generally, the idea, and I've told you this theory before, uh, you don't want to be uh, the gold miner. You want to be in the guy that's selling the picks and the shovels and the blue jeans, um, you know, in whatever, it was 1870, how many people remember the people that actually dug, you know, you probably remember a couple of people that uh, dug, uh, um, dug and made some money like Comstack stock or something, or Hearst, but uh, how many people know Levi's and wear their clothes still today? 
So I'm a big fan of more of being in the uh, uh, part of the industry that's going to go after it because, uh, one, terrifically uh, horrific winter uh, where really bad ideas are going to kill millions of people, probably freeze them to death. Uh, that's if we're lucky. It may be worse. But uh, we're going to have a lot of people die, especially in Europe, for very bad decisions. Uh, my guess is that uh, eh, they'll look a little bit different uh, about this issue and drilling and fracking. We've already seen the U.K. change. You know, where is that? Uh, where are they, all those fracking tools going to come from? United States. Guess what we figured out how to do in the last 10, 15 years? We learned how to frack. There's a lot of offshore uh, North Sea uh, wells that are fairly empty. But, man, if we cracked them open, could we get some more oil and a lot more natural gas? I think so. Inquiring minds want to know. But uh, that's my idea on it. Uh, question also about... Uh, would you compare Apple M1 and M2 chips versus AMD, Ryzen, and Intel new upgrade projects? Um, I'm not a big fan of buying Apple. You didn't tell me where you're from. That would be a big, uh, big decision. The reason why is if you buy an Apple laptop with one of these M1, M2 versions in it, um, they put little sensors in there, and they void your warranty all the time if it gets very humid. Those little, they're little button-like things, maybe half the size of a regular shirt button. Uh, and they will tell you whether there was high humidity. There's enough high humidity down here in Florida to set those off, and they'll void your warranty. I'm not a big fan of buying Apple laptops uh, or uh, computers at the moment unless you have a very specific uh, reason to have them. And then I would only buy the desktop. I wouldn't buy the uh, portable. Uh, like I said, I know too many people that have left their Apple uh, uh, laptops in the back seat of their car, and it's rained down here. It hadn't gotten wet, but the humidity was enough uh, to uh, bust the uh, sensors. They take it in, and Apple says, well, this, this uh, machine got wet, and it hasn't. And, you know, Apple's one of these kind of companies that can get away with it a great deal. Uh, I could see the reasons for buying the I iPhones. I don't see a lot of reasons for buying their laptops, especially if you live in humid areas. I've run into far too many people that have paid huge amounts of money. You're going to pay probably double for the same thing for an Apple laptop than you would pay for one with an Intel or AMD chip in it. Now, if you want to run the software, maybe it's worth paying the double. But uh, I'm not a big fan of buying their hardware, and especially their laptops. If you're actually going to take them out of the air conditioning in Florida, Texas, uh, even hot areas, uh, you know, if you, there's any humidity, there's just lines and lines of people suing Apple over that uh, and continuing to have to get in a war to get their stuff fixed uh, on that. Generally, uh, most of the retail Toshiba uh, kind of laptop manufacturers do not do that kind of stuff. I mean, if they get it and the water starts dripping out of it, uh, they'll void your warranty. But Apple's the only one I know that, that is that draconian on it. So not a big Apple fan to begin with, so I will give you that as a stipulation. I don't see a reason for paying double uh, what I would get in it. But certainly the new chips uh, for Intel and for uh AMD are absolute smokers, um, and that may be good or bad, depending on how high-end you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not. <laughs> uh, interesting beliefs. And, of course, uh, maybe that belief will leave us, will lead us to nuclear war. And it seems like uh, maybe one degree wouldn't have been that much to pay. 877-927-6648. Uh, okay. we got some more. About 41 seconds. Uh, question to look at NVIDIA. We will do that oop, on the way back in VDA. Uh, but uh, I do digress. You did bounce. Um, you're back challenging the previous low. Look at this when we return.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we get ready to wrap up yet... Another big day. Let's take a look at the markets already in progress over most of these TFNN stations. And, uh, well, we're right down there uh, testing the lows that we've been talking about now for a couple of weeks, and that's 36.36. Um, Want to keep a close eye on the volume. As I said, these Fridays, we've come down and tested this volume. I've been looking for... 18 billion shares or maybe even 16 billion shares let's say we don't even get close but still head lower on 16 billion compared to the 18 billion i've been looking at we're doing 7.4 billion shares right now so can you go lower on lower volume you can generally it entails exactly what we're doing which is you come down you hammer the low you hammer it again you hammer it again and it finally chews through the low but right now we've uh, we came to this level they ran everybody out on a friday's close the next day we ran it back up this week uh now we're back down here to test it one more time uh the volume uh as we went through was what 12 billion shares uh for the last friday so now what are we looking at 7.4 billion shares let's say that we get 11 billion shares 
that would be pretty steep for a Friday, uh, being at uh, one hour left uh, at 7.4 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. Um, that'd still be lighter. Uh, I don't think that we're going to get a bounce, as uh, Tim Ord has said on his uh, his uh, visits to the show. They like to make you sweat the whole weekend long. But uh, I'd be up. Uh, I wouldn't do anything today, but I would be up Sunday night when those Chinese markets reopen. We could have some real fireworks there. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you Monday, bright and shiny, all over again. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.